everyone, welcome back. Today I am making a crostata, which is the lazy way of making a pie. Um, so I'm gonna utilize some fruit that I have, and I made a pastry crust actually a few weeks ago and then just stuck it in the freezer, um, knowing that I wanted to bake something. So I'll show you how I did that first. First, with a whisk or a fork, air out your dough. Firstly, measure your flour and level it off. To this, I'm gonna add some salt, as well as some sugar. Then I've added my butter. Now, the whole part of making a pie crust is to keep your butter cold. So this is actually frozen from the freezer. I just um, cut it into some larger cubes and I'm going to kind of work this with my hands and kind of amalgamate it. Uh, the warmth from my hands will help the butter kind of like break down a little bit. I am using Irish butter and that is my preference, um, but you can use whatever you have. So you are going to work the butter into smaller pieces and then just kind of combine it with the flour. So then as you have shreds of butter, you know, you're going to start squeezing it together with the flour and once that starts to happen, you're going to slowly add in um, some ice water and I have in a glass some ice water with some vodka actually you're not gonna probably need the whole glass but um, I'm gonna start like a little bit at a time until this barely comes together so basically once you can pick up the dough and when you squeeze it it you know, kind of comes together like that. That's pretty good. Um, I am gonna add a little bit more just because I have some flour that is not sticking yet. Then I'm just gonna flour this a little bit. I'm gonna roll it with my rolling pin, um, which is nice because my rolling pin I usually use to tenderize chicken or meat so this is actually really nice and if you have a bench scraper it's very useful um, I do not have one at this time I'm actually gonna cut this into thirds and again, if you have a bench scraper, it's very useful for this part. Um, but I'm just gonna use a knife. I'm gonna stack them on top of each other and kind of roll it out a little bit. Notice pockets of butter and that's fine. That's a good thing. Then I'm gonna cut it into three pieces again. And again, just kind of pile it up on each other and this is should be enough for two pie crusts so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna divide it into two and then shape it a little bit wrap it in saran wrap and put it in the freezer or if you want to use it the same day um, put it in the fridge for about half an hour to an hour. The benefit of pre-shaping it a little bit and flattening it out a little bit, when you take it out again to re-roll it, it, you know, the butter won't melt as fast and the cold butter in a hot oven is what creates also the, the flakiness that you're looking for. And these are two saran wrapped crusts and I'm gonna keep these in the freezer for right now. And for everything else I'll be using today, here are my ingredients. So here in front is my pie crust. It's wrapped in plastic. I'm gonna stick that back in the fridge momentarily. But I have a few nectarines that I'm gonna use. I have some cherries, and this is from when I went cherry picking, and these have been in the freezer, so they're thawing out a little bit. I have a little bit of lemon, an egg that I'm gonna beat, some turbinado sugar, and then some plain white sugar as well as almond paste. So first thing is first, I am preheating my oven and I wanna prep 
my fruit. Um, the nectarines are starting to get soft and which is fine, but I feel like they're easier to cut when they're chilled. So these have been in the fridge as well. So you're just gonna slice up your nectarines like so. To my nectarines, I'm actually gonna add a little bit of lemon juice, just to squeeze, just so that they don't turn color. And a little bit of sugar. I did taste it. So it doesn't need a lot of sugar, but since I just added lemon juice, I'm gonna put no more than a tablespoon. It doesn't need a lot. I already know that my cherries are sweet, so this is just gonna get a little bit. Okay, and then set that aside. And I want to roll out my pie dough. Now, before I put them in the freezer, I already shaped them into a disc-like form. So this helps a little bit because you don't want to handle it too much. And I'm just going to roll this out to my desired thickness. And you're just going to keep moving it around as you roll it out to prevent sticking. And you're going to work from the center out and that's why you want to keep turning it also because um, you know you're gonna work different areas of your dough to keep it even if you find that you have like pockets or areas that there's not enough dough all you have to do is pinch off a piece of dough from somewhere else and it'll come together to make it like an even edge thing you can do is just like pinch it together and it'll come together and then you can't see the edge but um, I go ahead and put my rolling pin at the far end and then I roll it towards me to pick it up and then I will place it on my baking sheet and I'm gonna set this aside momentarily actually I'm gonna stick this in the fridge some of the edges are coming up the side but that's fine because that'll be the part that I roll over so I just want to go ahead and pinch any areas that you know may need to be stuck together And this is going to go in the fridge as I deal with my almond paste. Okay, so first off, I'm going to wipe off my work area a little bit to get rid of any excess flour. Now, if you don't have almond paste, you do not have to use it. I use it because, first off, I actually like the flavor. I like the combination of the almond paste with the fruit. Um, and it gives it a nice base so that there's not a lot of uh, leakage from the fruit. You know, sometimes if the fruit is really juicy, then it could be a problem. But, I mean, it's not a problem. It just goes through the crust rather quickly. And sometimes you want the crust to be flaky and not soggy. So this is why I do this. So I'm going to just start off by pressing this out a little bit. And then I'm going to also roll this out pretty thin. And this is going to be a layer right on top of my crust. If it's sticking and you have a pastry scraper, go ahead and use that. I don't, so I'm just going to use my knife and then roll it out again and if it breaks it this comes together really easily as well if you're using a chef's knife you're going to angle it slightly like to kind of scrape against your board so you don't scrape the almond paste itself and same thing with this you're going to roll it up carefully on your rolling pin And 
then you're gonna lay this over the base of your dough. If there are some areas where it's cracked again, not a big deal, just press it together. The other thing is if you feel that it's uneven, all you have to do is pinch a piece from one side, put it on another. Start with my nectarines and I'm just gonna arrange them, make a border all around. So this is part one. Um, if you need to, you know, adjust the placement due to where your dough is, um, go, please go ahead and do that. But you know, it's meant to be rustic. It's not meant to be perfect, which is why I feel a cristata is more forgiving than a traditional pie. And then my cherries. I'm gonna go ahead and just give this a flip in the same bowl that my nectarines were in. So whatever excess sugar and lemon was in here, I just went ahead and tossed it. These are pre-pitted. So before I put them in the freezer, I had already pitted them. And then this I'm just gonna put down in the center. And then you want to put your dough over. Now I'm using an offset spatula to help me with this, but um, you can use a knife, you can use just your fingers if your dough is super cooperative. Um, and you're just gonna fold over, pinching as necessary. And then to this, you're gonna beat an egg, and then go ahead and brush around your edge. You could do egg, you can do egg and cream or egg and milk, either way. And then lastly, you're gonna add some turbinado sugar also around the edge. And this will just give it a little extra crisp. And this is gonna go into the oven to bake. This is almost done but one last thing that I'm going to do um, this is some uh, just a touch of hot water uh, some apricot jam and I did a squeeze of lemon you can do this to give your fruit a nice shine it's just a little bit of a glaze this is quite juicy obviously there's a leak but oh well And I'm gonna pop this back into the oven for another five minutes. So I just pulled this out of the oven and it's been baking for about 50, 55 minutes at 375. And I do it that long because number one, I like a golden brown crust. Secondly, because of the layer of almond paste, I wanna make sure that the bottom crust gets cooked through um, and then Obviously, there's a little bit of a leakage here, but that's fine. It's also super juicy, so this is going to rest for a little bit before I cut into it. But the crust, when I tap it, it sounds fantastic. I'm actually going to leave it on the parchment paper. It'll just be easier to like lift up and transport to another plate. But... I'm going to cut into this, let's see, so the crust is nice and flaky. The almond paste turns into a bit of a cream texture and that adds the sweetness too because I didn't put too much sugar on the fruit and there's not too much sugar in the crust. So it's quite, quite good. Now you can serve this with ice cream, with whipped cream, with yogurt, whatever you'd like, or you can just have it plain. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I will have a recipe described down below. Please remember to check that out and also like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'll see you next time.